All right. Hey, can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? If you can, please leave it in comments. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Uh, let me know. Let me know. Archer, what's going on, baby? I see you, man. 142. It's on the way, baby, baby. It's coming. Who else we got up in here? Robin Hood. I like that name, man. Hey, do you guys like this one-step prep tie? Woo, boy. Okay, Shally asked me where I got it. My sister, Jolsey, Jocelyn, bought it for me. Thank you, Jolsey. Appreciate it. And I thought, you know, it goes, it goes nice. It goes nice with the little cufflinks and the... Uh, Whatever this thing is, the white collar, right? So, anyway, we try to stay crispy here at One Step Prep. So, what's going on, everybody? Hope you all are doing well. Hope you're weathering this, this uh, whatever this is. Okay, I don't even know what we're in here. But whatever we're in, I hope you're weathering it well. Hope you and your family are well. And, um, you know, I had, I had a, a, a couple things to, to talk about today. And, frankly, you just ask you and see what you guys want to talk about. Uh, but, really, the one thing I wanted to talk about is how uh, the autopilot, whether that's the MCP, that's the mode control panel on the 7.3, or the FCU, the flight control unit, how it always does every maneuver, a level off, a turn, bank, whatever. It does everything at 1G. And I know you guys have heard me say this before, uh, but it came up again. It came up again because I was doing a sim, and um, <clears throat> we're climbing out, and I, I gave them a uh, fire, Okay, it was actually a cargo fire, and they were climbing, climbing, and one of the things that they did, as I briefed them to do, <clears throat> is to level off, right? So if you're climbing out, and you're in a, of course, we're in a sim here, right? So let me just say this, okay? If you're in a sim, uh, if you're in a sim, and uh, you get above 10,000 feet, something's going on, man. Okay, you're either going to have a rapid depressurization, unless it's a loft. If it's a loft, then you're going to A to B, and that's the plan, that's the intent. Rock and roll, man. But otherwise, something's going to happen. So you're either going to get a rapid D, you're going to get probably a cargo fire, something like that. Common clearance that I get uh, um, all the time is climb and maintain, I don't know, whatever, flight level 220, right? Climb and maintain, flight level 220, and then somewhere along the way, uh, I give you some kind of fire here. Smoke, fire, whatever. More markers. Thank you, Shally. Okay, so let's say here you get your fire slash smoke, whether that's an ECAM, uh, master fire warning, whatever that may happen to be. One of the things you want to do immediately, immediately, let me say it again. One of the things you want to do immediately is level off, okay? Level off, okay? You're going to, preferably if you're on fire or you got some smoke or something going on, you don't want to be climbing away from the airport, gaining altitude, okay, when really what you want to be doing is leveling off, running an ECAM, QRH as applicable to the aircraft you're flying, and then making your way back. So, you want to level off. Now, the crew that uh, I was training did indeed do this, but something happened. I'm going to share with you in a minute. Let me check what we got going on in chat. Archer, you want to tie. I got to see where she got this made, man. Maybe we can get these on our store. Uh, Brian, appreciate you, brother. Uh, Chris, fellow spirit pilot, hope you're well. What's going on, man? Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you. All right, so look, level off. Um, I, I was in a uh, 7.3 NG sim when we were training this, and they pushed out hold. Now, 320 is the same thing. Push to level off, out hold, it's the same thing. So they push, right? And what happens is the aircraft doesn't, if you're expecting it, to level off immediately, like, oh, stop, it's not going to happen. Okay, it doesn't happen that way. And the reason it doesn't is because what I was saying earlier, everything on the FCU and or MCP, depending on whatever fleet you're flying, is going to be at 1G. So when you push to level off, the aircraft will maintain a nice 1G path, and it'll level off nice and easily, right? In the case of the 7.3 NG and you push out hold, it'll basically take a snapshot of your altimeter at the moment that you pushed altitude hold, It'll overshoot ever so slightly, and it'll come back down, and it's going to do this whole thing again at what? At 1G. So the point I'm making is everything is done at 1G. When you get altitude acquire, it's at 1G. Common question, okay? Common question for the um, orals. FMA, flight mode enunciator. 
Okay, we got our auto thrust over here. This is a 320 FMA. Uh, we have our vertical column here, our lateral column here, auto flight capabilities, okay, or auto land capability over here. And then you have your auto flight status, which is basically the autopilot engaged, the auto thrust engaged, blah, 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 right? Well, in our vertical mode, when we're climbing, okay, let's say, and I have several videos on this, forget about the fire for a second. I think you understood the fact that this is 1G, right? So now let, let's, let's give you a different scenario. ATC says trainer one, climb, maintain, uh, whatever, 15,000. Okay, great, 15,000. Here we go. So now you're climbing a 15,000, and the question often comes in, when does OutStar populate the FMA? Okay. Now, in the case of a, a 7.3, it would be out to choir. Same mode, same principle, same logic, same concept, different name. This is why, by the way, those of you that are transitioning from 7.3 to 3.20 or vice versa, or really you're transitioning from any aircraft, and you hear an instructor say, everything from the last aircraft, dump it, because this is not that last aircraft. By the way, I've, I've, I've done ground schools where uh, I had a pilot that was a 777 guy, and everything would be, well, it wasn't like that on the 777. Well, it wasn't like that on the 777. Well, it wasn't like that on the 777. So a lot of times you're going to hear instructors say, if, you know, dump everything from the previous airplane because you're not in, gr in ground school for that airplane. Now, the fact of the matter is this, I, at least I certainly believe this, aircraft are more similar than they are different. So what do I mean by that? Out to choir and out star are the same thing. They're just called different things. So uh, oftentimes I will say dump that, right? Because uh, you're not in that ground school. You're not in that simulator for that airplane. You're not flying that airplane. But before I say dump that, I'm going to see if we can adapt. And I have another video about this on YouTube. Adapting previous knowledge before you dump it because it's possible that you may be able to, uh, to do that and hopefully um, reduce... Uh, the time needed to go up that learning curve when you're transitioning to a new aircraft, okay? So where am I going with this, Joe? Well, here's where I'm going with it. These modes, outstar and out to choir, basically mean that the airplane is beginning to level off to acquire this altitude. When does this level off occur? And sometimes people say it's 1,000 prior, 500 prior, 300 prior, 400 prior, whatever. The fact of the matter is, it is whenever the aircraft deems it appropriate based on rate of climb, or descent in order to maintain what? What is it, man? What is it? Okay, if you guess what it is, I just had it on the board. 1G. 1G. It'll initiate the level off, whether that be a climb or a descent, whenever appropriate to maintain 1G. To maintain what, Shally? 1G. 1G. Hello, man, brother and sister, 1G, okay? Now, if I'm descending, same example, it's the same thing. I'm at 15, I want to get down to 14, same deal. When do I get out star? 1G. Now, this could potentially, for the 737 drivers, pose a little challenge on a go-around. So now let's talk about go-arounds, okay? I have seen, just so you know, there's this thing called FOQA, Flight Ops Quality Assurance. Flight Ops Quality Assurance. FOQA records uh, various parameters, okay, including speed, glide slope tracking, localizer tracking, altitude, rate of climb, rate of descent, all kinds of different things. And typically, your company will have various gates set up in a software program, whereby if various gates are met, it will uh, ping or notify your safety department. They can go back, they can even look at an animation of what happened, et cetera, that, that kind of deal, right? So, so let's talk about FOQA for a minute. All right, and, uh, and with FOQA, before I do that, let me check my chat. Everything's cool over here. By the way, leave in chat what you guys want to talk about. If you want to talk something specific, you have a question, comment, concern, complaint, critique, whatever. Okay, we welcome everything here, man. We welcome everything. Okay, so back to FOQA. I've seen go-arounds. I have seen go-arounds that, or maybe approaches, approaches that they, they look terrible. They're unstable. They're all over the place. And you're like, oh, man, I hope, oh, get, get some flaps out. Well, maybe throw the gear down. Throw, oh, slow down. Stop. Put, the, put the boards out. And you're watching this, and you're like, come on, man. Okay, you know what? Just go around. Do the go-around. So this approach is all over. Do the go-around. They end up doing the go-around. And you're like, yeah, man, good, 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 good deal. He's doing the go-around. He's doing the go-around. The go-around 
looks worse than the approach. So then you say, oh, no, man, don't do the go-around. Don't do the go-around. Just land. Just land. Just do the approach. <laughs> okay? All right. So, uh, you know, why? Why are go-arounds such an unusual thing? Well, because we don't do them frequently. We don't do them frequently. We do takeoffs frequently, and of course, every time you take off, you have to land, so we're doing those all the time, but you're not doing go-arounds all the time, and sometimes that poses a challenge of its own. So let's talk about a go-around and uh, how this plays out, and then I'm going to share with you how that 1G path that I was talking about earlier and the out acquire mode and all this stuff can tie into the 7.3 and pose a real issue for you. But let's talk about go-arounds universally first. The first mistake I typically see with go-arounds is the over-rotation of the aircraft and exceedance of the flight director. Okay, if you've been following this channel, you know uh, I, I have plenty of videos where I talk about this. You say go around flaps in the case of a 320, go around flap 15 in the case of 7.3. You nose the aircraft up. By the way, the flight director bar is waiting for you. Okay, let me put it in a different color marker because Shally so generously brought me a red color marker. Thank you. Okay, so, so you, you put this flight director here, which will appear, right? And uh, here's what's going to happen, or at least what I see happen frequently in sim training, right? We go all the way up and we sometimes exceed this flight director bar. Now, when you exceed the flight director bar, the speed begins to decay drastically. And the second you have a speed decay, you're instantly uh, uh, behind the energy curve. Bad place to be, particularly if you, if, you, if you torch an engine right here. Now you're in a real bad spot because you got three characteristics that are working against you. High, high angle of attack on a go around, high thrust setting, low air speed. And of course, with low speed, low rudder effectiveness, low flight control effectiveness, etc. Okay, so don't think of the go around as this as this this deal where you're coming down with this approach pitch attitude, right? Coming down, and then all of a sudden go around and you pitch for the moon, the stars, and Mars. Man, relax. Take it easy. Okay, all you got to do is just just say your call out and transition nicely. Smooth, man. Keep it butter. Okay, you don't have to. You don't have to go nuts on the go around. Now, when you do this, by the way, one, it gives you time to say your go around call out properly. It gives you time to follow the flight director properly. We ensure we don't go above the flight director because if we do and we end up behind the power curve, well, not going to be good. Particularly if the instructor and or examiner decides to fail an engine on you right there, you're hosed. Okay, so so. This is one of these things where you want to go nice and easy. Go around flaps or go around flaps 15. Now, 7.3 is interesting because a 7.3, when you're doing a single channel autopilot, I don't want back and forth, right? Because I have people watching this channel from both fleet types. The 7.3, when you push toga, the autopilot disconnects. It clicks off. And that's an, that's a, it's going to put you in an interesting predicament because see what happens now with the single channel approach when you hit that toga button and the autopilot disconnects. The autopilot disconnects, but the auto throttle stays on. Now, when the auto throttle stays on, it's going to apply thrust to the go around thrust value. And remember, we have these under wing mounted engines. So here's your aircraft under wing mounted engine. Thrust application results in a significant nose up pitching moment, which takes commonly a lot of people by surprise, particularly that are coming from RJs, right? Where the, where the where the uh, engine is tail mounted. Also, uh, corporate jet pilots, right? Where again, tail mounted back here. So this underwing mounted engine thrust application nose of tendency takes a lot of you by surprise that don't have this type of experience. So what I'm saying is when those engines spool on you, be prepared for that. And those of you that fly the 7.3, when you push toga, you don't really have to pull very aggressively because the very thrust application brings the nose up anyways, just purely out of aerodynamics. All right, so let me see what else we got going on before I progress. Archer, what is the best thing to do to ratchet up skills during idle time? Periodic study, both videos, audio, I mean, anything you can get your hands on, man. Yesterday or the day before, I was opening my limitations, memory items limitations. It doesn't take long. This is 10, 15 minutes. I just go through memory items limitations, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, what's going on? Got two cameras. We're multitaskers up in here, okay? So, um... Uh, I would say, man, just, you know, uh, crack a book open and or a video, uh, audio, some kind of program. You know, I, I tend to do maybe once or twice a week. Uh, 
I don't know, 30 minutes, twice a week, 30 minutes, even if you did once a week, frankly. So just, just make it a habit to do something every week. So my example was two days ago, I did memory items and limitations. It didn't take me more than 20, 30 minutes. I just went through them. Obviously, I'm here talking about this stuff now, which keeps me refreshed as well. So there's one thing about those of you that are CFIs or, or instructors or whatever, one thing is about teaching is it forces you to keep your head in the game. Uh, but if you're not doing that, then at least maybe once a week, half hour, or twice a week, a half hour. Uh, Robin Hood looking for an aviation school? Send me a message, man. I don't know what kind of school particularly. Are you looking to do private instrument commercial or are you looking to do 142 type rating? Okay, uh, I can help you out either way. Uh, Chris, is it acceptable to reduce to climb power prior to thrust reduction altitude on a go around in an A320? Uh, it could be. It depends. You may have to do like a, um, a soft go around where you basically touch toga and come back to uh, thrust reduction be, because you may already be above thrust reduction, right? Like you may be at 1500 and the go around altitude is 2000 uh, In which case you may have to uh, just touch toga and come right back because you're already above thrust reduction. So yeah, that's possible For sure uh, It would be okay depending on the scenario Private pilot Robin Hood. No worries, man. Please send send um, Send me an email, okay Maybe we can just write it in the chat. This is it joe.m can you just put it in the chat? Yeah, Shally's going to put it in the chat. S send, me a, send me an email, and um, I can recommend some schools for you. Um, okay, where am I at? What am I talking about? Go-arounds, underwing mounted engine, uh, thrust application, nose-up tendency, blah, blah, right? All these things. So, so here's the deal, okay? Uh, in the 7.3, and I'm going to go to the 320 because I like flipping back and forth. But in the 7.3, when you push toga, the auto throttle is going to advance, right? Uh, autopilot kicks off, nose comes up just because of the pure thrust uh, advancement, as I said, and commonly where we have the issue now is the thrust comes in, the autopilot's off, you start pulling back, and then realize thrust is advancing and you end up above the flight director. So be aware of that. There's a bit of an engine spool up delay, and that could cause you to go above the flight director. So be mindful of that. Now, as you're climbing out, here's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, go around, right? We go flat 15, positive rate gear, 400 feet. We go with a roll mode. Uh, let's just say heading select, right? Runway heading. And then typically at 1,000 feet, we do our thrust reduction. Okay, Archer, you got it, man. Robin Hood from Sri Lanka. What's going on, baby? Okay, send me an email, man. I will get you some schools. 400 feet heading. At 1,000 feet, we typically do the thrust reduction regardless of aircraft. This is where we go climb thrust. We can accelerate at the same time if the acceleration altitude happens to be the same. Right? And here's the deal. How often have you done a go around and you hear from the tower, Trainer 1, oh, we see you on the miss. You can fly runway heading 2000, contact departure. They'll get you back in. They give you an alternate missed approach instruction. Okay, commonly, a, a go around altitude, you have some that are as low as 2000 feet, particularly at sea level airports, but usually you're going up to like 4,000, 3,000 feet, something like this on a go around. Okay, and if you do a, a missed, uh, it's very common for the tower to say fly runway heading, maintain an altitude that is less than the published. Now, Good intent, good intention. Let me share with you why that could potentially be a problem for 7.3 drivers. Okay, what's going to happen is this. Remember that at 1,000 feet, we're going to begin to do our thrust reduction and acceleration, assuming both altitudes are the, th are the same. That's where we go climb thrust, set flaps up, maneuvering speed, uh, or bug up, right? So you, you, hit, you set your climb thrust here, and we begin accelerating. Now, when we begin accelerating, you're going to notice when you roll the speed up, in the case of a 320, by the way, it's the same thing. Same thing happens. You bring the thrust levers back to climb. SRS mode basically is, is uh, now going into a open climb. Flight director bar pitches to maintain speed, and it's going to be a lesser pitch attitude. It's going to come down here, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 10 degrees. So you start lowering the nose. Now, as a result of lowering the nose, two things happen. One, we reduce climb rate. Two, we start increasing speed. So speed is beginning to increase here, right? And what happens now is that if my uh, level off altitude is 2,000 feet, okay, as opposed to 4,000, there is less distance between our current altitude and the level off altitude. And remember when out to choir goes in, out to choir goes in at the appropriate moment to maintain a 1G path. Okay, maybe I need to write bigger so you can see this. But it's at the appropriate moment to maintain a 1G path. Now, why does this matter? Where am I going with all this? Well, there's something on the 7.3 called auto acceleration. That basically means the aircraft, speed-wise, will begin accelerating automatically for you. And when you push TOGA, you will notice the MCP speed window is closed. 
Let me say this again, on a 737, you push TOGA, the MCP speed window is closed on a go around. When will it reopen? Okay, there's a couple different times that this will reopen. Again, those of you that are 320 drivers, stick with me because I'm going to talk about that as well. There's not as many gotchas. That's why I love the 320, man. I love, you know, I used to always be, if it's not Boeing, I'm not going. And then you fly a 320 and you're like, I don't know about that anymore, okay? Okay, <laughs> I won't debate that on this video, but... All I got to tell you is that bus is fresh, man. It's clean. Okay, so check it out. So now, we were going to four. We're going to two now. Out the choir goes in on one of these different uh, scenarios. Out the choir is the first one. Autopilot on is the second one. Level change is the third one. Vertical speed is the fourth one. Okay, so... These are four scenarios where the MCP speed window will reopen and you as the uh, flying pilot will regain speed control. Why is this of significance? Because particularly here with Altitude Acquire, when that speed window reopens, it will reopen at whatever speed you have at the moment that the Altitude Acquire mode populated the FMA. What? Let me say it again. Simpler, okay? The second you get altitude acquire into the FMA, your MCP speed window will take a picture of your indicated airspeed. It'll send it up to the MCP mode control panel uh, speed, and you will begin to fly that speed. That's the speed that the aircraft will maintain. Now, that speed may not be the speed that you want, because if you did a go around here with flaps 15, when you get to your thrust reduction acceleration, the next flap setting is going to be 5. Now, by that point, your speed's probably around 170, 180 and accelerating. And if you get altitude acquire now, your speed window will reopen at 170 knots. And it's very possible, if we're not doing proper speed checks, when you call for flap retraction pilot flying and pilot monitoring where you go to move the flap handle, if you're not doing speed check and moving that flap handle, you could end up retracting flaps and staying at 170 knots. And this is the importance of this, okay? There's many ASAP reports on this from all kinds of 7-3 operators, from the highest of the high-tier airlines all the way down to mid-tier, lower-tier airlines. Every 7-3 pilot I've trained, this has typically been a gotcha for them, okay? Now, let's talk about the um, 320. If you have questions on this, by the way, I explain it more, even more than what I already explained in our course, OneStepPrep.com. You can grab any 7-3 program there. Um, <clears throat> current offers, what's some of our current offers? JJ10, 10% 10 off. Uh, OneStepPrep.com forward slash all, get all of our stuff. Uh, 597 I think is the price for that right now. Anyway, we've got a couple offers. These are the two that come to mind. Uh, A320, here we go. All right, so you, you go to Toga, you say go around flaps, go around flaps, FMA populates. Man, Toga. Uh, vertical mode says SRS. And auto thrust is going to be in blue over here. Man, Toga, SRS, auto thrust, blue. Go around track probably is what will populate in the lateral mode. Go around track basically means uh, uh, go around track, right? It's just going to track runway heading until we uh, either it navs, okay? Typically about 35 feet, it'll go to nav and it'll start following the missed approach. Or if you select heading, then it'll go on a heading. Or if you have the bird on, you can pull and you get the track, right? So, I mean, it just depends kind of on what you had going on. But Mantoga SRS, let's talk about that. So, Mantoga means that the thrust levers are manually in the toga position. Okay, active range. I've said this a hundred times before. Active range for the A320 drivers. Uh, just above idle for the thrust levers, up to and including climb detent. So if you go up here to Toga, which is above climb, you are outside of the active range. Now, if you're single engine, we go up to and including MCT. This is with one engine down here. What does this mean for you? Anything above that, which would be Toga, is manual thrust. That's why this is man Toga. We're outside of the active range. So, man Toga, SRS, speed reference system, which basically relates to the flight director Initial pitch up of 15 degrees, okay? And then, uh, in the auto flight 
status column, that's column number five, it will say auto thrust in blue. Blue is an armed mode. It's armed. Okay, blue is an armed mode. Uh, 73NG, if you advance thrust lever to forward stop, do you get N1 limit or more than that? Okay, I'll address that in just a minute, brother. Let me finish up here. Okay, so um, <clears throat> auto thrust is blue. It's an arm mode. This is going to change back to white when we get to the thrust reduction uh, acceleration altitude. Thrust reduction, really, because you're going to bring the thrust levers back to climb. So when we pull these thrust levers back to climb, this goes white, right? I guess it'll still, st it'll still be here. It'll say auto thrust. It just won't be blue. It'll be white. Okay, and we'll be out of effectively out of the SRS mode. It'll be in an open climb at that point. So what are the key things here? Well, frankly, not a whole lot because why? If you have the autopilot on, the autopilot stays on. That's the first thing. Beautiful. Okay, it's very, very automated aircraft. Okay, um, if you don't, you're, you're commanding on the side stick a, a G load, not so much a direct relationship. This is, again, we're assuming we're in normal law. So in normal law, side stick relationship, okay, if you want to know more about laws, onestepprep.com forward slash laws. i got to throw that in there. Okay. So it's a, it's a G load. So when you pitch up, it's a bit easier on the stick. It's not as uh, easy as well to over pitch on the flight director. So I frequently don't see as much over pitching tendency. And the primary reason, again, apart from the G load, is because when we command toga, the autopilot A stays on. And if it's not on, then, well, you've already been flying, hand flying all the way down anyway. So you go straight to the SRS, thrust reduction, you bring it back to climb. We get to an open climb, this comes down to 10 degrees, and then we lower the pitch attitude to 10, we begin accelerating, and of course, uh, the aircraft will begin to accelerate to green dot. We clean it up, and then we're going to go 250 knots below 10,000 feet. It's very automated, okay, 320. Uh, in general, if you go through our YouTube channel, and if you go through the online programs, you're going to find, man, uh, it's, it's very, very automated aircraft, okay? Which is great, considering it's 80s technology. Uh, so... All right, that's uh, kind of the 320 in a nutshell. I'm really a big fan of a lot of the automation on it. I also like the 7.3 just because it's kind of a more, it's like a manual car, you know. And my cars are manual, okay. I have a, I got my airport car, five-speed Yaris. I got my Camaro, my six-speed toy. And they're both manuals. Sometimes I like getting in there, man. But for work, I'd rather relax, okay. So... If, if, if I had a choice, 320, man, all day long. All right, so let me go through the chat. Let me see what's going on here. 7.3NG, if you advance the thrust over to forward stop, do you get N1 limit or more than that? Uh, you would get a little bit more than that. Uh, Ot main, I think I'm saying your name right. If I'm not, I'm sorry. Uh, you would basically get maximum, maximum amount uh, of thrust available for you, which would be slightly over whatever the N1 limit is, whether that's a takeoff, a go around, a climb, it would be a little bit over that. Uh, A320 program, thank you, Shally, for typing in there. Sir, you're doing great. Thank you, Mr. Patterdar, appreciate you. So look, um, you know, these live streams that we're doing, we're doing another one for members only, August 18th. It's a Tuesday, and uh, we're going to be talking about the 320 and the 737. Now, I think we're, uh, Juan's doing the first one, JD. Uh, let me see what day it is. It's the 18th. It's a Tuesday. Yes, 10 a.m. for 737. And 1 p.m. for the 320, right? Is that what we're doing? Yeah. 10 and 1. 10 a.m. for 73, 1 p.m. for 320. Uh, I believe JD himself, Juan, who's actually out doing a course right now. That's why he's not here with me. He's usually here with me, okay? He'll be here at 12, though. So we got about 30 minutes. Um, he's going to be doing the 7-3 program in the, in the morning, and then I'm going to be doing the 320 later on in the afternoon. Now, we're doing that every month because you're sitting around in quarantine, and you're just like, a, a lot of us are either A, not flying, or B, we're flying a reduced schedule. By the way, that's including me. I, I'm also flying a reduced schedule. So it's important, man, to stay right now more so than ever before. Stay sharp. Archer asked a good question earlier, which is how do I do that? Periodically crack open a book, go through memory items, go through limitations, review systems, put on a video. Shoot, I go back and I watch myself on my videos, which is kind of a, you know, a crazy thing, but I go back and I watch myself, okay? Because it's just kind of refresh, right? Uh, maybe I spend a lot of time doing one fleet and not the other fleet and just want to get back in the game. So, all right, we've been live for about a half hour. Typically, we do these about a half hour. The 18th is going to be one hour long. It's from 11 to 12. No, no, I'm sorry, 10 to 11 for the 7-3. One hour long. Members only. If you're not a member, go join now. Coupon code JJ10. I had it on the board, but I uh, erased it. 
10% off. And if you are 320 on the 18th, we're going to be doing uh, from 1 to 2. It'll be an hour long. Talking all systems related things primarily. We're doing this every month. Every month, virtual ground school. Keep you guys fresh. Keep you crisp, man. All right? Send me an email. Send me a message. Uh, if I can help you, send it to Shally. Leonidas, nice tie. Thank you, thank you. It was a gift from my sister. She actually gave it to me a while ago, and I just hadn't worn it. And um, I woke up this morning and decided to wear it. <laughs> okay? I'm just having my coffee, and I'm like, I think I'll bust that tie out today. Okay? I'll put it on with a nice little shirt or whatever. So thank you. I appreciate it. Should we put them in the store? Leave it in comments. Maybe we should put these in the store. Julio Gabriel, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Planning on getting the A320 course. Captain Patadar, appreciate you too. Thank you all for tuning in. I know everybody has a, uh, a busy schedule, man. You're all doing your things. You're trying to, to, to stay safe in today's environment. So I definitely appreciate you guys being here with us. Uh, why don't we do one on e-jets? In the works, man. In the works. It's, uh, uh, we're looking at the Embraer program. We're actually first, but... With the Embraer program, we're looking at a transition to 121 operations. So we're constructing a course primarily for the uh, military or the corporate jet pilot or even the helicopter pilot that's never been, anybody who's never been in a 121 environment. Maybe you were 135 before, or military before, and you don't know what a dispatch release is, an amendment, uh, gate return, air return, all kinds of things that relate to 121. So we're doing that, and then, of course, in combination with that, we actually started looking at the Embraer series, and uh, I think we're going to be doing something so stay tuned. All right, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next live stream.